So a little bit of a backstory. My first ever gaming laptop was actually a Razer Blade. The second revision of the original 17-inch design, the one with the GTX 660M. It was a really great laptop. It lasted me the whole three years. But fast forward to 2019, and we have the latest and greatest from Razer. This is the Blade 15 with the optical keyboard. Now, if you're familiar with the Razer Blade, I think you can pretty much guess where it got its design inspiration from. It's pretty much an all-black Windows MacBook. That's what it is. And that's not to say that it's bad. I think it's pretty great. The entire laptop is made out of aluminum and the whole thing is just really well put together. The corners are nicely rounded off. You can open the lid easily with one hand. It feels really robust and sturdy. And it does have that premium feel. Though of course, with its all black matte finish, it's really easy to see your fingerprints and oil stains. And if you do accidentally chip it, you'll definitely see the underlying silver underneath. There's also one other thing that I noticed and it's only on this Blade 15 with the optical keyboard. The chassis is actually as thick as the one that is found on the base model, even though this is the advanced model and does not have the RJ45 Ethernet port. The other thing is that this is also the heaviest of the bunch, coming in at 2.3 kilograms, whereas other variants of Blade 15 top out at 2.15 kilograms. All in all, it's still a pretty minimalistic design. You wouldn't look out of place even if you took it out in a business meeting and technically still pretty lightweight. Another highlight of the Blade 15 is the display. We have a 15.6 inch 1080p IPS display that has a 240Hz refresh rate. It also comes with 100% sRGB coverage and comes factory calibrated by Razer. The brightness, however, is slightly lagging, coming in at just under 250 nits. With that said, the display is still really awesome. You get good viewing angles, a nice and vibrant colors, but the real kicker being that bottle smooth 240Hz refresh rate. If you've never used a high refresh rate display before, go ahead, try one. I don't think you're able to go back to a standard 60Hz anymore. Up top, you get a 720p webcam that supports Windows Hello, which is a nice touch considering that the previous generation did not support it. Moving down, we have what is the standout feature of this particular Blade 15. And I believe this is the first gaming laptop to feature an optical keyboard. For those of you who don't know what an optical keyboard is, it's basically quite similar to a mechanical keyboard. But instead of a traditional mechanical switch actuating your input via metallic contact, an optical keyboard enables the actuation via light. To get to the point, an optical keyboard generally has a longer keystroke lifespan and to a certain extent, faster response. So you might ask, how does the optical keyboard on the Blade 15 fare? To be honest, I really enjoyed it. The keys are nice and tactile and require just the right amount of effort to register strokes. In short, I feel that most of you out there will definitely enjoy the keyboard on the Blade 15. But it's not all that great. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> okay. But it's not all that great. The keys themselves are fine, but the layout needs a little bit of a rework. As many others have pointed out, the position of the right shift key and the question mark key is a little odd. And it's that way because Razer wanted to put full-size arrow keys, which is fine, but I would say that most people will use the question mark key more so than the arrow key itself. Now, it's something that you'll definitely get used over time, but even within Razer's own family of products, the plate is the only one with this keyboard layout. So if you have a desktop at home, you might find yourself readjusting every now and then. You'll get used to it, but you will definitely have to readjust. The other thing to mention is that the secondary icons on the function and number rows aren't backlit. It's minor, but I wish it was. Past the keyboard, we have the trackpad. And I'll say right here, this is the best trackpad that you can get on a Windows laptop, period. The only thing that can best this is the MacBook. The trackpad is nice and large with a smooth glass surface and of course, it runs precision. You can use it with ease with your thumb while typing and palm rejection is also excellent. Simply put, it's really a joy to use. As for the speakers, it's not bad, but it won't amaze you. It gets the job done. In terms of I.O., on the right, you get a mini display port, HDMI 2.0, standard USB 3.2, and a USB-C, which supports Thunderbolt 3. On the left, you get a proprietary power jack that's reversible, standard USB 3.2, another USB-C port, and your headphone mic combo jack. Basically, you get a good variety for a 15-inch laptop, though I would have liked to see an SD card reader, but I guess that's where the Blade Pro 17 comes in. We now move on to what this laptop is designed for, and the entire company as a whole, gaming. Our Razer Blade 15 comes equipped with an Intel Core i7-9750H, 16GB of RAM, 
an RTX 2070 max scale along with a 512GB NVMe SSD. So I took the machine through its paces, ran a few modern titles, a couple of older ones, and here are the results. So you have seen the results, the Razer Blade 15 will pretty much handle anything that you can throw at it and you will definitely enjoy the gaming experience thanks to the high refresh rate display. But gaming aside, the Blade 15 is also pretty popular with creatives out there. So here are the results for DaVinci Resolve and Cinebench R20. For those of you who are interested in the speed of the NVMe SSD, Sequential read speeds are about 3GB per second while sequential write speeds are nearing 2GB per second. Now that I've touched on gaming and creative work, what about temperatures? And I have to say, the Blade 15 does a really good job at managing heat despite its form factor. The CPU hovered around 86 degrees Celsius while maintaining clocks around 3.8 GHz, while the GPU hovered around 80 degrees Celsius around the 1500 MHz mark. The last thing to touch upon is battery life. And to be honest, I was pleasantly surprised. On the better battery setting, I could get 6.5 hours of actual usage which was a mixture of documents, web browsing and even Lightroom with the screen brightness at 50% and even at 240Hz as well. The only thing that I turned off was the RGB backlit keyboard but even then, it was a pleasant surprise. So it goes without saying that the Blade 15 is a really powerful piece of hardware but it's also got a price to match. At this point in time, only the RTX 2070 variant has the option to choose the optical keyboard and this specific configuration will set you back 4,099 Singapore dollars. It's definitely not something that anyone out there can just afford, but given that it's Razer, when has the Blade ever been affordable? So to round things up, the Blade 15 is a really nice gaming laptop. You get great performance, you get that 240Hz display, in what I would say is also the most professional looking chassis for a gaming laptop, and you get to enjoy that optical keyboard. I would say, if you are a fan of Razer, you will definitely be happy with your purchase. If you aren't, there are many other options out there, but if you are looking for something minimalistic and something that offers an optical keyboard, you can keep the Blade 15 in mind. So that's it, those are my thoughts on the Blade 15 with the optical keyboard. Drop us a comment if you have any questions, subscribe to us if you haven't, follow us on Facebook and Instagram, till the next one, see ya!